so very excited to be here tonight. Let's just open up in prayer. Father God, Lord, I praise you and thank you for your word. That your word is a weapon that we can use against the enemy in our lives as we begin to speak it out. I ask, Lord, and Holy Spirit, that you would teach this teaching farther than my words tonight. In the name of Jesus, protect our hearts, guard our hearts, and fill it with your word and so that it produces fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, um, we have some live stream people um, streaming in right now, and so I just want to say hi to you and welcome. Um, if you don't know anything about me, um, I just thought I'd give you a little synopsis of myself. Um, I'm a pastor here at Living Word Bible Church. I've been a pastor for over 20 years, but in the last seven years, um, I'm one of the lead pastors here at Living Word. And in 2020, what happened um, in March of 2020 when the pandemic hit and I got word that my sixth grader, Logan at the time I was in sixth grade, and um, got notification from the school that he would not be coming to school for two weeks. And then after that two weeks, got another notification that I'm sure you all got this too, that he wasn't gonna come for another month. And then I got another notification that he's not coming at all. And we went to online school. And during that time, what happened was I was, I had this book stirring on the inside of me. Um, this book that I knew actually for 10 years I had been speaking, one day I will write a book. And when the pandemic was here and my, my child was home from school on a computer all day and I was sitting there watching him do his work, Jason said to me one day, why don't you write your book you've been talking about? <laughs> and so I sat down next to my child who was in online school, and I wrote my book in June, May and June and July of that year. And now here, two years later, after all that we have gone through, I'm knowing and experiencing the power of God in his word and being able to see all the people and know that you all are so invested in knowing how to be an overcomer in this world. And that is by the word of God. And so tonight, it, this is our I Speak Jesus class number one, and it's going to be about believe it and speak it. When my daughter Katie was born, um, she had some complications and she took on fluid. She, she swallowed fluid. The pediatrician came to us and said, um, because of the amount of fluid that she swallowed, um, she would have damage to her lungs. And, she, and so he goes, I just want to prepare you that your daughter will probably have breathing problems all of her life. In fact, she probably will have asthma. And quite often, Katie was a sick little baby. And when she would get sick, we would have to get out this breathing machine and put medicine in it and put this mask over her face so that she was able to breathe in the medicine and it would break up all the, the mucus in her lungs. And Katie, she had just a sweet personality. She, she accepted it. She never complained, but we didn't accept it. Pastor Jason and, and I, we said, no, no, no. Our daughter will not have a life of being on breathing machines when she wants to do something, do some kind of exercise. And so every time that that would flare up, we would speak the word of God over her. We would say, Katie, you have strong lungs. Your lungs are healed in the name of Jesus. You will not have a life of breathing problems. God has healed you. Five years went by, and I know it was around her fifth birthday, I realized we haven't had to do a breathing treatment in a long time, and our daughter was completely healed from breathing problems. That was a miracle in our lives. And you know, in that five years of believing for healing for Katie, we could have complained. We could have said, well, where is God? Why is this happening to us? Why do we have to go through this? We could have accepted it. Well, this is just what it is. This is just what she's going to have to learn to deal with in her life. Or we could have described it. Well, what happened was when she was born and give all the details of what happened. And, you know, this is exactly how the world has trained, trained us to speak. 
When life takes a turn for the worst, we are trained by the world to complain about it, to accept it, and to describe it. And here's the thing. Your world is absolutely impacted by the words that you speak. In fact, your current circumstance has a lot to do with what you say daily. Money's tight. Don't know how I'm going to get through it. Don't know how I'm going to afford Christmas. Can't even, can't even pay the bills. How am I going to drive? Gas is so high. Sickness in my body. Well, the doctor said, I have, the, I have a symptom. It feels like this. And you know, it doesn't help that the last few years, the world has programmed us and spoken so much fear over us. It doesn't help that we have been told to quarantine, to social distance, to be away from each other, to fear, fear, fear. All that garbage that has been spoken over you in the last two years, no wonder we see so many people right now experiencing fear, anxiety, worry, and depression. It is on the rise right now, but let me tell you something right now. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. He gave you his word, and you can overcome fear, anxiety, and, and depression, and worry by the power of his word. If we desire word of God results in our lives, then it's time we start taking a, a real hard look at the words that are coming out of our mouths. Because the truth is, is Satan has worked overtime to get us complaining, to get us accepting, and to get us describing what's going on in our lives. But you can take a hold of that tongue of yours and you can change the tide in one moment. You can change the tide and see a different life for yourself. And so tonight we're gonna talk about how your words create your world and that they have power. So let's start right now in Hebrews 11 and verse three. And I really like how it's um, said in the Passion Translation. It says, faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. He spoke. What, a, what an amazing picture. God spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that we see. You know, in the very first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, God lays it out so simple and so plainly for us to see and learn how words create. Do you know in the very first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, God spoke 10 different times. And in those 10 different times, something was created. What was he showing us? He was showing us that words create, but also your words have power right? This past weekend, my husband told an amazing testimony during his, his sermon this past weekend. Had a family um, approach him a couple Sundays ago, about a month or maybe five weeks ago. Came up to him and said, can you pray for us? Well, what can I pray for you about? And this wife said, well, my husband is in the hospital. He has double pneumonia and the and the hospital is now, and the physicians have now come to us and said, what do, we, what do you want to do? It's, it's, it's so bad. We can't keep him on the ventilators anymore. You need to make a decision on his life. And so Pastor Jason said, well, what do you want me to pray? And she goes, I want a miracle. And so he prayed with her, and then he was able to text her, and he said, I want you to speak these words over your husband. And this is exactly what he texted her. He said, I want you to speak. The Lord is the God who heals your husband. Your husband is healed. Husband, be healed in the name of Jesus. And so she began to speak those words over her husband. And she would text Jason, I spoke the words. And he said, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Wednesday of that week, his fever broke. That was the first good news that they had gotten in two months. Later that week, and Jason said, praise God, keep praying, and keep praying, and keep speaking those words. Later that week, 
they took him in to scan his lungs and they found that his lungs were starting to clear up. He was, he was now able to be taken off the ventilator, off the feeding tubes, all the, off all the machines. And now today he is out of the hospital. He is in rehab and he is on his way to complete healing in his life. The power of prayer, but also the power of that spoken word. Amen? James 3 says this, When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn that whole animal or take ships, for example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. That bit in the side, in, inside the horse's mouth, that small little bit will steer that large horse, that large animal to the left and to the right. The same goes with that small rudder on the back of a ship. No matter the storm, that ship can go through that storm by that little rudder. In the same way, your tongue, that small little member of your body, can direct your steps. It can take you through the biggest challenge, circumstance, or storm that you face. That little powerful member of your body can help you be an overcomer. But that tongue, it needs to be in in agreement with God's words. It has to have God's words coming out. What words do you speak over yourself? Do you speak highly of yourself? Do you speak positive about who you are? Your words have significant power. And let's not be, um, or let's, let's rephrase that. Let's be careful not to slip into that victim mentality. See, the victim mentality wants to speak, and it wants to say, oh, why is this happening to me? I never get better. You don't understand. This is, this is the, the genes I have in my family. This is the, the line that I came from. This is what's happened to me. This is, I was victimized in my life, and now this is where I am. But my Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Joel 1 says this, it says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears and let the weak say, I am strong. What is that saying? It's saying to ready your sword. That sword is the word of God. It is ready to defeat the enemy. Ready that sword and shout out, let the weak say, I am strong. Because can I tell you, no matter how you have been victimized in this world, no matter what the circumstance is, you are more than an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Jesus resides on the inside of you. That means the finished works of the cross reside on the inside of you. That means that you have access to healing. You have access to peace. You have access to joy. You have access to these things because Jesus lives on the inside of you and he desires to come out of you so that you can have an overcoming life. And you are full of the Holy Spirit. You have the power and the anointing to get through any trial in your life. We have to allow his words to be our words those powerful, creative words, because just as his, just as God's words created the world, God's words in your mouth will create your world. Amen. Our son Logan, um, last year when he was in eighth grade, he had to do a science project, a science fair project. So he came home and he's like, I decided I decided what I'm going to do for my science fair project. And I said, okay, what are you going to do? He's like, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take an apple, and one, I'm going to have two apples. One apple, 
I'm going to speak really bad to it, Mom. I'm going to tell her that it's ugly, that I hate it, and it's horrible, and it's disgusting. I said, okay. And he goes, and then I'm going to take another apple, and I'm going to say, I love you. You're beautiful. You were made, a, you were made so pretty. And I'm going to say all these nice things about the apple. And I go, oh, okay, so you're doing a project on the power of your words. He goes, yeah, yeah, I am, I am. And I go, you do realize that I wrote a book about the power of your words. He goes, oh, you did? I was like, yeah, you know what? You're not my favorite child anymore. <laughs> you went down a rank. <laughs> there was a scientific study of water and the power of words that I came across. A Japanese scientist and water researcher, his name is Dr. Masaru Emoto, Emoto, he found that words spoken affect the molecular structure of water. And so under a, a, a high-speed photography kind of microscope thing is what I'm picturing in my mind, he would take pictures of water, water crystals. And water that was spoken to kindly of, words of love and encouragement, showed these beautiful crystals, these beautiful, it almost looks like snowflakes. But the water that was spoken destructive, mean, harsh, evil words, were smushed and crushed and destroyed. And it got me thinking, 70% of our bodies are made up of water. The power of your words on a molecular level inside of yourself. Not only the words that you speak about you, but what do you speak about others? What do you speak about your spouse? your children, your home, your family, your relationships. It has, it scientifically, it has an effect on us. There's a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 1. It's about Zechariah. Now, Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth, they didn't have any children. And the angel Gabriel came and visited Zechariah and said, your prayer's been heard. I have good news for you. You're going to have a child. He was well along in years. And so Zechariah said this, he goes, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man. And so is my, my wife is well along in years. And I love what this angel said. He said, I stand in the presence of God. And I came to give you good news. And he said, and now you will be made silent. And you will not, basically, he won't talk again until that promise came to pass. What does it say in Proverbs 18, 21? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who indulge in it will eat its fruit. If you indulge in death words, you're going to get death fruit. And if you indulge in life words, you're going to get life fruit. And God knew that he could not have death words because he needed a John to come into this world. Amen. So he had to silence the father, Zechariah, so that he could not speak against what God was doing in this world. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. What are you believing for today? A healthy body? A financial breakthrough? A restored marriage? A baby? Maybe you're believing for a new job. I want you to know that provision is already here as you begin to speak out his word. He has accomplished it for you. We have to speak and align with God's promises. Hebrews 11, I mean 4 and verse 12, it says, For the word of God 
is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joins at marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. How do we defeat the enemy? How do we overcome the thoughts of worry and confusion, anxiety, stress? The tormenting thoughts that want to come in? The times during the night when we wake up and we're so stressed out and we can't even get back to sleep. How do we overcome these? We overcome by the word of God. We overcome when we possess the correct weapon. And God has not put you on this earth without giving you something as a weapon to use. He has given you his very word of God. He is giving you the promises that no matter what you face and what you go through, you can go to your Bible, you can get a promise, and you know what? You can stand on that one single scripture and see results in your life, see victory happen in your life by just one word from God. When I watch my kids play video games, you know, the main objective is to kill that enemy, but they have to possess the correct sword or the correct weapon to defeat that enemy, right? In the same way, God has given you his word. When you begin to speak the word of God in your life, the supernatural power of God is released the moment that you speak it. It's just the same as when God said, let there be light and light was. When you speak by the stripes of Jesus, healing, that sword comes out of your mouth. Just like it says in Hebrews 4 in verse 12. It's sharper than, it's alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. And I know this sounds weird, but actually a sword comes out of your mouth in that moment. And what an awesome picture for us to see that as we speak the word of God, that sword is coming out and it's defeating the enemy. It's overcoming the sickness. It's breaking off the fear. It's breaking off the depression. As you speak it, that sword is coming out of your mouth. And I want to show you something here. I want you to see this descriptive picture of your Jesus. In Revelations 19 and verse 15, John paints and has this open vision of of Jesus. And it says, and I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true this is your jesus with justice he judges and wages war his eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns he is dressed in a robe dipped with blood and his name is the word of god The armies of heaven were following him riding on the white horses and dressed in fine linen white and clean okay Here it is. And verse 15, coming out of his, I can't make this up. Coming out of his mouth is what? A sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. This is a picture of your Jesus. And Jesus resides on the inside of you. So when you speak the word of God, when you speak the way Jesus speaks, that sword comes out just like your Jesus. And it defeats and it overcomes and it has power to bring the promises of God in our lives. I sometimes like to think of that sword like a paintbrush. You know, fear, worry, anxiety, it wants to paint a future for you. But God has a different painting for you. Sickness and disease, things that are going on and that you're dealing with in your body, it wants to paint a future for you. It wants to speak to you. It wants to tell you what that future is going to look like. But God has a different picture and painting for you. The insecurities that you deal with as a person, you want to get ahead in life. You have these dreams, but something always stops you in your tracks. And you know that it's insecurity. That insecurity wants to paint a future for you, but God has a different painting for you. His painting is full of hope, full of victory, full of prosperity, 
full of wholeness, sound mind, peace, blessing, fulfillment. That is what God has for you. And we can paint that different future when we learn to speak like Jesus. Amen. And I want to end with this example. I'm going to talk about Logan again. Our son, Logan, when he was about 12 years old, um, he started playing golf. And we had a golf instructor. And when he would have this golf lesson, I would sit and I would watch the lesson and I would hear what this golf instructor would say to Logan. And so he would say, you know, Logan gets up and is hitting balls and teeing and swinging. And he would say, now Logan, you have a beautiful swing. He'd say, you are a natural at this. Now let me tell you something. He had never picked up a, a club ever in his life. He did not have a beautiful swing. It was a crappy swing. <laughs> I sat there going, what is he talking about? Is this really, is this a good instructor? The next week I'd go back and he would say it over and over again. Logan, you have a beautiful swing. You are a natural at this. One lesson showed up, sitting there on the bench listening. And he goes, now Logan, I want you to know this. When you are in junior high, you're going to be on the golf team. And then... When you are in high school, you're going to be on that golf team. And then you, when you go into college, you're going to get a scholarship and you're going to play for your college. And I started doing a happy dance on the inside of me because I was like, well, this is going to pay for college. <laughs> you know? But what was that instructor doing? He was painting a future for Logan. Let me tell you something. He's in ninth grade right now. He has been on the golf team. He was in, on the golf team in junior high. He was now on the golf team in high school. And when we go to the golf range, we have strangers come up to us and ask him, how old are you? And he'll say, this happened during the summer. He said, I'm 14. And this one gentleman said, you have a beautiful swing. You are a natural at this. Oh, I feel the anointing on that. The power of your words can paint a different future for you. We just have to make that announcement. You know, you need to announce to your future, I'm going to be out of debt in two years. You need to announce to your future and paint the picture that I will own a house in 2023. You need to make an announcement to your future and paint it and say, I will live a long life and I will have a healthy life. You need to announce to your future, I will find the man or the woman of my dreams and I will have an, a happily ever after. You need to announce to your future and paint it out exactly the way that you want it. And that, my friends, is speaking Jesus. Amen.